us, we have a pretty special guest. Uh, we met him about two weeks ago at the Garden State Comic Fest. His name is Ben Goldsmith. Ben, say what's up. What up? Ben is the uh, writer for the Seance Room comic. Uh, we ended up passing by his booth and for Source Press Point, and it was just... He was an awesome dude. The comic was awesome. We just enjoyed his company, and you know he's on the show with us today. So we just want to go through, <laughs> ask him a few questions, get his input on everything, how he got started, and so on. And we just think it would be a good episode for everyone to tune into. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Really. Yeah, you're very welcome, guys. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, sorry, uh, this is a retake of last week where I was supposed to be on the show, but I went and saw Teen Titans Go, and I was. So excited to see the movie that I, honest to God, completely forgot that I had a. I, so I get out of the movie because I'm I'm a, a huge proponent of like the phone goes away. I don't even look at it. Um, yeah, see, see, I lost everyone when I was like I ditched you guys, and then I got them all back when I was like and the phone. Um, so I, I get out of the movie going, you know, just a little chuckling to myself like <laughs> it's fun, and then I was like, oh no. <laughs> On the phone, it was like you guys called me twice, and the, like, Ugh. so then there's the, then there's the inherent decision of like, do I lie? And I chose not to. I well, we appreciate your honesty. <laughs> you got it, so, guys. Uh, Thanks for having me on. We were, I mean, that was a pretty good excuse. That's a solid excuse. But like, yeah, I went to go fucking watch Teen Titans movie. I would have ditched us too to go see it. So, you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. I mean, I like this more. I would. I. I want to see Nerdcaster goes to the movies. That's what I want. Yeah, see. that would be uh, probably fun for like five minutes, and people just be like, "Shut up, watch the movie." Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, guys, it was good meeting you guys up in New Jersey. That was uh, the the Garden State Comic Fest. Yes. Yeah, in Morristown. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Morristown. And. Um, if if you guys missed me at that one, you can find me at. We're doing the horror con down in Atlantic City, uh, at in the Showboat. Showboat, uh, yep, in September, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get myself down there, so hopefully uh, we can meet up. Yeah, for sure. We um, it it's we did the one in Atlantic City at the beginning of the year, and uh, it, it was pretty quiet. So anyone who's listening to this, come come find us, come join us. <laughs> um, it, it's not ideal to sit at a booth and it like old poker room that's yeah. now a convention it's a haunted poker room it's the trauma I, poker room it's the yeah oh god um it was really orange um i you know i really uh, appreciate it though maybe i'll have a new seance room story out of that oh transition oh, seance. Look at that. so right. speaking of your seance uh comic is this the first one you've written the first like ongoing series, first uh, thing. Um, All it, of that. Yeah, I guess the first it's the first thing. Got, yeah, the first one that got published. Um, there's other stuff. So the thing that I always tell people is if um, if you really want to do anything sort of in the art world, um, you have to spray a wide shot. Like I, when I went to Source Point Press, um, they. I kind of got in on the idea that I was like, I have this thing and this thing and this thing. And actually, I remember Travis uh, McIntyre, the editor of Source Point Press, uh, editor in chief. He said to me, early, he was like, well, we don't really need anything right now. And my, my reaction was, what about later? And that mindset was the same mindset that went into the sounds rooms. I came to him um, with about nine pitches for different horror type comics. Okay. And we went down to three um and of those three i wrote up uh these these like four page reports basically on each one um and that was the one that got chosen the seance room so it it, it really wasn't my first th it wasn't even really my first like love was to do the horror comics I'm, I'm i'm a big fan of like um twilight zone tales from the crypt all that kind of stuff okay. I, I never in a million years thought that that would be wh where my first thing would be, but, uh, it's, it's definitely, I mean, I, I'd be full of shit if I didn't say it wasn't a blessing, you know? <laughs> uh, it's, it's well-deserved, man. It was a solid read. It was good. It's, oh, thanks guys. I, I enjoyed it. it. It was just, yeah, I don't know, man. It's, I was trying to, 
think of what it's comparable to, and I couldn't really off the top of my head, but I just, I fucking loved it. I had my wife read it. She liked it. And, yeah, man, just trying to pass the word around. Wait, I'm, I'm sorry, you say your wife liked it? Yeah. Wait, you have a wife? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how did anything okay. marry him? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if, if you are in the background, just call for help. We're here for you. Um, just no, man. I, do we know each other well enough to bust balls like that? Yeah, um, that's, sure. That's well, and that, that's, actually, that's actually a huge compliment, by the way, is that, you know, it, it, it transcends. Like, does she – so I don't, I don't mean to be presumptuous, but does she go to conventions? Does she engage in, in the nerd culture and all that? things that we really clicked on and just the movies we watch and stuff like that um some of her movie choices disappoint me but that's okay <laughs> uh but she goes to uh new york comic-con with me we really started doing that like four or five years ago um that was like a big thing we did we get a house in weehawken like airbnb then we take the ferry over right to the javits center and we started doing that like five years ago and now she goes to the little random ones here and there with me and uh her favorite comics are mostly uh, Neil Gaiman's Sandman run, uh, Fable, and uh, Saga. Like those are her like big ones right now. And now the Seance Room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because you mentioned um, all three of those that you mentioned are um, are easily episodic and, and serialized the way that like a TV show would be. Um, they're they're almost above the comic format certainly like would never work in a bi-monthly thing like the dc could never do that right now with with the paradigm that they have you know those all three of those are easily um correlative in terms of the what what the story they were telling and how they told it and um obviously saga like is anyone who so i'm 32 uh no i'm I'm sorry i'm 31 i'll be 32 on tuesday oh Uh, happy birthday (laughs) <laughs> Thanks, guys. And uh, I, I think anyone who's like my age and and won't admit that Brian K. Vaughn was a massive influence is lying to you or to themselves. There's no, you know what I mean. Um, so when you read the Seance Room, you're definitely going to see a lot of that. What the, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not saying I'm. You don't have to have immersed yourself in comic book culture to to jump into it, and um, that. That came from, like I said, because I wasn't a horror writer per se and like a real horror comic reader. Like I love my EC comics. I love all that kind of stuff. But yeah. and, and and obviously, I, I mean, I would consider Alan Moore's Swamp Thing one of the greatest horror comics of all time. Uh, but you know, the thing was is that I, I approached it from a format that if it was the, the only part about it that horror is the mold and then everything that goes into that mold is human and that's the way that i approached it which you could say the same fables is it's it's the the classic fable iconography but it's all in drama poured into it um in the same uh saga and the and the epic the space epic you know what i mean it's it's a family story at the end of the day and that's and that's the same thing with the with um how sounds from because i'm not uh, there's a problem that happens and i'm sure you guys have read these and i'd actually be curious if you guys have uh, uh, an example right off the top of your head of, of stories that become too enamored with the uh, material or with the genre. Okay. Well, like, um, I guess the material, I would say, I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head. I mean, really, like, any fucking Marvel comic coming out right now or DC comic, any of this <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it's it's tough because we love genres for a reason. We love spaghetti westerns. We love John Wayne and all that stuff. But it, is, it wasn't at the time that they were like, well, we have horses and we have you know, and it's this stuff. And, and, and but they were the human stories of the time. Exactly. It just became the time that we associated all of the things that they had with the western, and so that becomes cliched and and, and it gets too in love with itself. It, 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 so. The same thing happens with horror. I mean, I you know I get a lot of horror uh, comics now, especially because I just want to keep up with what's happening, yeah. uh, especially in the independent scene. Um, and 
I, I mean, there's a lot of great stuff out there, but then there's a lot of stuff too where you're reading it and you're like, oh, you you just really love horror movies, and you're 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 forgetting that this is supposed to be, um, in, uh, in some respects, a recreation of the human experience. All right. uh, yeah, I can see good that. way to put it. Yeah. So. <laughs> so that one i'm sorry that went way off base guys no, but good, so man. yes it was my first published comic <laughs> but, oh, shit, that's what, that's so you, you said you had like nine other ones that you were working on and, and presented yeah we so um oh lord without getting too much into it so um what year is it 2018 in 2016 i signed on with seance with source point press for this book mm. In 2017, we had the first one come out. Um, and then in 2018, we had the second one finally come out. The third and fourth are already in production um, to come out. One by the end of the year, probably, and the other one by the spring to speed up the thing. We also have um, our new artist for our second run of four, uh, and he's already working on them. Uh, we have... Um, a an actual concept. I, I used to be a professional guitarist. I used to play for Rostrum Records, Wiz Khalifa, Mac Miller, all that kind of stuff. And my background has always kind of been in music. So we uh, there's a, a, a comic book store called Rubber Chicken Comics out in, in Massachusetts that is uh, paying for us to go into the studio and record an album based on the seance room. There'll be um, the first track will be uh, like a whole musical. Um, opus of about six, seven minutes uh, on the journey up, the spinner, Henry Vice's theme, and then each successive song will be one of the ghosts. So, uh, yeah, and it'll be printed on vinyl. Uh, we're going to do red and black mixed vinyl. Uh, Caleb, the artist, is doing uh, a brand new cover art for the, the vinyl. Um, uh, and we have a board game that's going to be in, we're in production with uh, with Deep Water Games out of Texas. Uh, those are all sands from things. The other stuff, <laughs> everyone, go take a uh, water break, go pee, <laughs> do what you to do. Um, and we'll wait. <laughs> Elevate me back. back. Uh, so, um, Mad Cave Studios out of uh, Miami. They're doing Battle Cats. They're doing Midnight Task Force. Um, they are through Diamond. You can see them everywhere. They hired me to do. Uh, a five issue arc of a brand new series that I uh, helped to sort of, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, show run on. And um, that is, uh, I'm working with Travis Mercer, who's who studied under Brett Booth, uh, Norm Rapman. Like, this kid is just the uh, one of the most talented people I've been able to work with. Uh, he's He's got that classic um, 90s image, uh, uh, you know, really solid line work, very strong aesthetic, perfect, you know, uh, um, perspective, um, um, oh, geez, what's the word where proportions, perfect proportion, you know, he, the, he, what, he, he draws feet. Yeah. Actually, well, he, he told me the other day, he's like, uh, he's, he's, uh, o overly concerned with feet because of the implication. Uh, yeah, so uh, he's doing the art for it. We we know, I already wrote the first five chapters, uh, and that will be coming out in the beginning uh, at around uh, sometime in next year. The first issue, uh, New York Comic Con this year, we're debuting some stuff. Uh, have oh boy, there's a there's a I mean, those I I'd say those are the only ones I can really talk about because everything else would just be me like. Um, Oh, no, 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 please go oh, ahead. Thank you. But no, that, that other stuff is cart before the horse. Those those things are, are sort of the um, the meat and potatoes of next year. Okay. And then, and, uh, but yeah, so as far as Sandlands from goes, if you guys, issue one and two are already out on Comixology and on the website and everything like that. And um, uh, if, if you're in. Bob's, uh, secret stash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I asked if you were in Jersey. I'm like, oh, we live like 20 minutes from there. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, we. Someone was visiting the store, the picture, uh, oh, okay. of of that. That was really, that was really cool. I didn't. That was a, uh, yeah, that was really cool. Um, 
Walt, I went, Walt obviously is like one of the nicest guys in the world, like uh, back in Morristown when we went and did the, oh no, 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 the first, the first showboat show we did um, in Atlantic City. Um, so yeah, so uh, that was really cool. But yeah, if you're into the seance room, we have nine guaranteed issues coming out. Um, uh, those are those are the guarantees. So I mean, there's not for lack of any of that. Okay. And I should probably, for anyone who uh, cares or gives a shit about it, uh, I should probably say what it is yeah I, I that's that where i was going sense. next yeah <laughs> if you want to give an overview on uh on on the actual story yeah right? uh, so <laughs> these poor poor people who came to hear you guys talk <laughs> I've, I've not, not not. <laughs> they're, they're here for you ben this is all you buddy uh so the seance room i was just thinking earlier about when you said i was your special guest and i'm like ooh, that is overstating it <laughs> uh the so the seance room is uh each issue is a one shot in the respect that it is like an episode of Twilight Zone or Tales from the Crypt in that you can read it front to back and you get the entire story. You do not need to read them in order. Um, it, it is a place where this guy Henry Weiss owns and somehow someone ends up in the mansion and in that mansion there is a place called the Seance Room. Within that room, there was a spinner, which the people inevitably end up spinning. And one of the six ghosts that are trapped there, um, each one representing a different thing, time, um, love and power, uh, death, uh, regret, you know, you, one of those is going to come to life depending on whichever reason that victim of the, you know, the victim of the week is there. Um, you know, the, the first one is a politician, doesn't believe women are equal to men, uh, sort of about hypocrisy. And then the second one we uh one thing we're gonna do for sure is um there's we're keeping yeah there it is that's the, uh, second, one. That's the second one yep that's second one yep and he's got and the first one across from one is, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> you guys are both there. oh you guys are good <laughs> um and the first the second one is about a girl who brings the ashes of her husband to the seance room to uh he was an outdoorsy guy she wants a special urn for him she heard this is a place to get one and she gets a tree buries his ashes in the tree and then from there the 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 awfulness takes over now the thing that is decisively different from the first to the second issue is whether or not the victim deserves what happens um and part of that is the idea that each issue is going to be something that within the realm of what we've established we are going to give you something completely unexpected nice. uh we you know there's there's no not necessarily a rhyme or reason to the stories that get told at the seance room uh, the, really the only uh, overarching factors are that it's always the mansion it's always one of the six ghosts and there's always a uh, sort of a twist um yeah yeah, oh yeah. Uh, in in the end, um, well, you already know everyone's dead up front, right? Yeah. So, I can't pull that one. That makes sense. <laughs> what if ooh, what if I did the uh, the anti M night and it turns out they're all alive? Ooh, and it was just a magic trick. <laughs> that would be a twist. <laughs> that would be an M night twist. So you you obviously have at least the first four written. I don't know how how far, but do you have a favorite ghost in the story? Whether it's one we've seen already or one that's coming up. You know, um, so we have I have 15 written already Wow. with four of them being trite and dog shit. And mm -hmm. those will never see the light of day. Uh, I'll, you know what I'll do is I'll like when this whole thing is going really well, I'll, I'll hire like some nine year old to draw like a terrible <laughs> that way. That way, the the the. the art matches the content of the thing I wrote. Um, you can just have me do it. The only thing I can draw is stick figures anyway. You, dude, they'd probably be better than what these stories deserve. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so we have, like I said, we have, uh, we have, I have enough right now to meet the, the guarantee production that those nine issues with a couple extra left over for um, potential um, guest artist features, one shots and in, in, in the like. Um, ultimately, I'd love to get Ben Templesmith to do one. He is helping us out with some other stuff, and um, he's becoming a, 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 a a friend, I would say. I, I like him a lot. I've always loved his art, and uh, I mean, if I could get him to do that work, you were already in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, uh, with with those ghosts, my favorite is actually. Well, actually, who? who what about you guys? I want to hear yours first. Well, favorite ghosts. We we've only got to read two of these. Uh, oh, fair. 
yeah, fair. Two of these, but based on looks and everything, um, looks. I'm gonna go with masks. So yeah, I like the, just the first comic of masks, and it was just I don't know. I like his story. I like that. I, I, dude, what was that weird ass movie with Tom Cruise in the end where everyone's like blowing each other? Yo, man, I don't I don't watch it's, movies like, like that. Um, Eyes Wide Shut. Yes. That's, yeah. that's the second this, time that's come that's up today. That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> Not the comic that's, itself, but that character drawing. Yeah, no, um, Kayla Valerio did all the design work on the looks, so I give her full credit. Um, I just told her, all I said was, I said, this is the, the archetype and this is the thing they represent, and she really knocked it out of the park. Um, those designs are fully hers. Right. She did a good yeah. job, uh, man. And Tom's pretty yeah. good looking. Looks like an evil-ass train conductor. Yeah, well, and actually, uh, he, oh, uh, I love it once, but I can't. I have, I have art from the, from the next artist who's working on the next arc, yeah. and the, the, some of the first stuff he sent me was the train conductor, and it's so good, um, and I, I, I really shouldn't. <laughs> I'm looking, can you see me looking at my phone being like, I just want to do the with him, but I can't, I can't. That's okay. You'll see him soon, I promise. I'll show you guys after the recording. Deal? Right, sure. Yeah, I'm, cool. I'm a big fan of Mr. Weiss himself, the the, the main guy. I love him. He's my, uh, he's my favorite. He, well, and I, that's kind of a cop-out answer because he's not technically a ghost. But the, um, he is... Um, he puts a everything in motion. Huh? He gets everything in motion. He, he, he brings them in. It's great. Were you an older child? Were you the oldest? Yes. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I like the guy who's in charge of all those other assholes. No, um, he's he's actually my favorite. He's he's the analog for me. Like, um, uh, there's an issue, issue six, uh, which is already in production. Is he is actually the one who takes over, and it kind of comes from my experience of I'm I, I hate I'm not a, a big black and white rule guy like i don't like the idea of just telling someone to follow a rule because um i think that everything is shades of gray i think that everything is somewhere in the middle of the situation at hand i don't think there's a lot of ways to um to, to I, I, I my as i get older the, the more i start to like appreciate that happiness in its um purest most uh communal form comes from being present, paying attention, and finding the happy medium at the moment. Uh, that being said, a lot of rule people, people who are really into rules, have a hard time doing that, and then that alienates a, 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 a strong majority of people at any given time. That is one of my biggest pet peeves. So in issue in issue six, Harry actually takes over for one of those types of people who come into the seance room and. Uh, it, it gets pretty graphic and that's, it's, it's sort of like, that was like a, um, uh, like a, like a, like a tension release type of issue. And, and because he is me, he's, that's everything he, you know, uh, he, he's, he's a bigger dick than I am though. Like he, he's, <laughs> he's kind of a nihilist. He's kind of a shithead. He kind of is, I think he's like, if you had lived as long as he has, you, you, I mean, you wouldn't care about it. And everything that's is super. I, like yeah. yeah, I love characters like that. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, so that that's my favorite ghost. Yeah, I, I root for the bad guy what in most things. The right answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I ask I ask people all the time at the conventions because uh, I don't know if you can find in that first issue at the staple break uh, all six ghosts are sort of represented, and sometimes uh, you know depending of how if I'm just curious or whatnot or what's going on that day I'll ask people different. Like everyone chooses a different one because um, everyone is dealing with. It's, it's their own shit, and it's. What would you, you know. say the majority ghost people would say? There isn't one. Nah. No, it's it really is across the board. As a, like all the people you get, everyone legit has that many different answers. That's yeah, cool well, well, we did, I mean that that also was That's sort of. Uh, it was it was sort of contrived on our part where we each one of those six ghosts is an umbrella uh, fear that a lot of other fears go under, right? Like regret, regret is something that means a lot, right? There's a lot of things that can go into there. Um, same thing with time. Like time is, it's, it's one of the four fucking dimensions. Like yeah. it's a big, if we picked 
five people who all said time, each one of them would have a different reason for why they picked it. Okay. And, yeah. this, and this is where you tell me your deepest dark secret on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, just, just growing up. <laughs> So many things I've done differently. <laughs> so, I don't, know. Uh, don't tell me. Then I'll steal it for an issue. Yeah. Oh, it would just be very depressing. <laughs> well, I guess that works in the horror genre. So, so you got... How, um, sorry, well, go ahead. No, well, no, I'll just, just to, to what you were just saying, like, and the other thing we're trying to do with this is um, it's not like uh, blood, guts, gore, um, shock, stuff it's it's these are things that are right like the 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 thing that we so there's an issue coming out where there are five kids that go to the seance to the to the weiss mansion where the seance room is to ha, to because they heard it's like a haunted house so each one of them goes in and each one of them has an experience that is a real uh fear like one of you know i'm not to give too much away but like one of them walks through a wax museum of all their failures as an adult as they grow older like oh. the like the first time he drank before 3 p.m the yeah. first time he watched his you know what i mean like the, these are all and and to me that's that's a real horror is is to examine like it's it's the opposite of escapism right like yes. you're you're reading you're reading these comics to like turn off and and then sometimes if you read, you know, with these issues, it like forces you to turn back on. Uh, it's not fair. <laughs> I'm not saying it's nice. Uh, I actually just had to go through. We I did a huge edit because we have the new artist coming on. So I did a huge edit. Uh, oh, and by the way, do not worry. The artist who's coming on is very similar to Kayla's work. We're still keeping with the that beautiful painted uh, uh quality with the, the dark colors and the mood and it's going to stay the exact same that way it's, uh, yeah the artistry in this is really phenomenal yeah uh, I you know that that being said by the way about the new artist I would be more than happy to have Kayla stay but she just she's she's worked her hands to the bone for these first couple issues and uh, you know she has a full time job and, and you know I, I respect and appreciate her the time she's put in but I know she's got to work on her thing too her yeah. own things um, so um but yeah, so I've been editing all these and going through them all and reading them all and reading them in succession. It's like watching Shawshank Redemption, Sophie's Choice, and then pick your other fucking movie, like all three back to back to back, right? Like these like depressing human. No, wait, did I say Shawshank Redemption? I didn't mean that. I meant Simmer's, Simmer's List is the one I meant. So like Simmer's List, Sophie's Choice, and then, you know, what's another movie that's like just The Pianist, right? Like just these like, or, or Life is Beautiful. These like just depressing, like... And and they're like unrelenting because it's not it's not like a thing where the movie ends and you go <laughs> they got out of that what a what a love that, that was it's like they're, they're like that's way too real um, and we 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 very purposely attempted to do that uh, with with these um, and it's it's actually my my fiance won't read them she hates them <laughs> she uh, she won't let me read them anymore because she's that's all right. My fiance won't even fucking listen to the podcast. <laughs> I was like, listen. She's oh. like, no, I, I live with you. I don't need to listen to anything. <laughs> She's like, I yeah, listen she... to you enough. And I'm like, yeah. I, I... <laughs> That's fair. I do not blame her at all. You, dude, you, you could be George Clooney, and your wife would be like, I fucking have to see you every day at the house. And like, why, why another time? Yeah. You know? Uh, and what I'm saying is, you look like George Clooney. That's that's the takeaway here. <laughs> that's I'm flattered. I'm flattered. So you, we yeah. got the the the, say, the next uh, issue of the Seance Room coming out uh, by year's end. You correct me if I'm yeah. wrong on any of this. You also have that vinyl and that uh, that album you're working on. Yeah, uh, and the board game. You're a busy guy. Uh, <laughs> we tr you know we try to stay busy. I um uh sort uh man it's you know what it is it's like i i have to stay busy because otherwise i'll annoy people um if i'm not thinking about like four things at once uh i will constantly text or call or be like where's this thing or what, what about this piece or what about you know blah, blah 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 so i have to be working on other things so that when i do receive finished art or um you know feedback on a proposal or, or like something like that i've already moved on to the next thing so it's a pleasant surprise, okay. you know, otherwise yeah. I will sit there and drive myself crazy. Um, 
just yeah. yeah. <laughs> just pondering what to do next. Okay. Yeah. And I and the the other thing is I can't put that towards any sort of productive career so <laughs> where that would make money, that that amount of obsession and meticulous uh you know, uh, obsession. Yeah. The meticulous obsession. Uh, so I, man, I should, I should just be a, yeah. Santander. <laughs> yeah. What's up? I'm going to just be a banker instead. You know, I'm, I'm very motivated, obsessed with that. Yeah. No, I'm on a podcast right now. I'll call you back. All right, <laughs> I just can't do the podcast anymore. I'm a banker now. So <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of math, so you're going to be thinking constantly, and you're going to get that brain going to work. So, I mean, good conversion. I like it. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the big thing about being busy. It's good. It's good to be busy. Um, but uh, you know, this goes back to the thing earlier about when I went to say when I went to Source Point with the nine things. Is like I realized pretty early on that if I put all of my eggs in the one basket, that um, it's a, that's a very small, um, you know, that's a small target to shoot for. Um, the more I work on the bigger the target becomes, the more likely it is that I'm going to hit it. Um, and that, and that's the way I approach it is that, um, it, I, I mean, I know guys who like, they have their, their baby, their one thing. And, and that's the thing that's going to do it and make them. But, uh, I, I, I've, I've never been that way. I, I, I always like, I, I like lots of different things. I, I you know, um, I like I said, though. things and people and you know holding yeah. that one and, thing will stick. and eventually some people with money and credibility will be like that guy can throw an egg you know what I mean? <laughs> like, and they're like I'll, I'll, I'll throw those literally. eggs <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh that was my foot i was just switching legs um <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that, so that's the thing. And it, it's already kind of worked like the thing I'm working on with mad cave. They, they paid me up front, which is terrific. I don't own the property, which is the big difference between source point and this. Uh, but they, they trusted me with this property that they'd already been working on. Um, I actually, funny enough, they, they gave me, uh, we, I went, I went through a whole audition process with, with writing things for them and then like interviews and all that kind of stuff. And, um, uh, because I, I'm kind of like, I'll be doing like a bunch of stuff for them now. And, um, Relatively, you know, okay. and um, they had these two things that they were going to go to production on. One of them was more horror based, which I just assumed that I was like, oh, well, that's what you guys brought me in for this one. And then the other one was uh, like a female assassin book, which I which, you know, uh, so, of course, they gave me the female assassin book because uh, life's funny. So I did that. So I we did that. And now after that comes out, that'll, you know, that'll be another, um, just another, the, make the target bigger, you know? And this is, this is about creating, creating as, as opposed to the seance room and the seance room, when, when the seance room is happening, it gets all of the attention, but when it's not, it's, it's still part of the, you know, if, if, if this was the ghost that was haunting me, the umbrella ghost yeah. would just be creating. You want me to be a porn star? You want me to share my load? Yeah, dude, that's, yeah. all gross, dude. load. that's gross. And I wait, hold on a second. Porn? Porn company? <laughs> yeah. No, I was going to be a banker, but I'll do porn. <laughs> sure. Right. I'm on a podcast right now. I'll, I'll talk to you later. Hey, guys, I can't do the podcast anymore. I'm a porn. <laughs> I, I extremely like the fact that the porn company is called you. There's no actual name of anything nope. else. Just porn. Nope, just porn. Just, yeah, we're just porn company. <laughs> They, you know they like to keep vague. Should be really, just business cards with porn companies. They, uh, like the it's one you know, they, they, Yeah, they, they didn't want to try to dupe anybody. And he's breathing so heavy. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So, um, any any uh, anything else you guys want to know about the? Uh, now, have you guys? You guys have been doing this podcast. You said the Nerdcaster just uh, kind of just began, relatively, right? This is, I'm gonna let Joe feel this. Thanks. I kind of just hopped in like forty something episodes in, um, just because me and Joe became pretty good friends. We're both in IT. 
I, and, uh, so yeah, Joe, it's all you, buddy. Well, I thought I was. We were interviewing him. That what? How did he flip the tables here? Um, yeah, he's good like that. I did. <laughs> part banker, part porn actor, and part porn. fucking story writer. So. So I started a, a podcast before this one. Um, things didn't go well. Uh, you want to drop their name? No. <laughs> um, and and I wanted to, to go in a different direction than they did. So we amicably split. They, they took the other one. Um, and I decided that I didn't want to give up. I wanted to continue going. So I started this, this one, uh, the Nerdcaster podcast on my own. Um, with no help other than my wife doing some of the artwork and co-hosting every now and again because it's it's really hard to talk to yourself in front of a microphone and about a subject so I needed somebody to work off of so she helped me out she got bored and tired with it I kind of let it fall through the cracks for a few months and then um, bought in Justin over here and and another guy Danny okay. to get this back up and running keep me uh, on track and to help me out because I mean I uh, my ideas only go so far <laughs> And um, here we are today, hopefully. Um... Yeah, it's it's not easy, man. It's yeah. definitely the, to keep it up and to keep going. And the uh, the it's the time commitment that I, I'm always really impressed with with you guys and um, people who jump into this, man. It's a, we try we tried to start one for Source Point Press. And I think we got fought four episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we you know, it, it's yeah, it's just it's a time. Thing. Um, but the the only reason I really asked too is I'm like I'm just kind of curious of what you know if you've gotten feedback from people like what kind of stuff they like to hear because uh, I can you know I can tell you guys fucking weird stories from the road I can tell you guys you know the tips and the tricks I, whatever you guys need I, I'm, I'm thank you I was 100 percent gonna actually ask you like any really crazy ecstatic fans or stuff you've seen being on the road and stuff like that that was gonna be one of the next questions coming up so yeah you know I. It's act. It's a lot of stuff where, um, you know, I get asked a lot. If like, and, and not just me, but like, um, like everyone, everyone at Source Point Press, like Bob Sally gets this a lot. Um, uh, K- Casey uh, Nora, uh, Casey Pierce from Nora, she gets this a lot. Where people will ask if they can cosplay as the characters, and that's that's definitely pretty cool. And so that's always an, um, really that's like really really. Uh, wow. uh, that's, humbling yeah. yeah and then um but the but the funny the funny stuff is like you you just get used to hearing no a lot you know and um so we'll hear like uh people with <laughs> people will come up oh people ask if it's like free all the time and then they get really mad at you when it's not free that's funny uh i'll you know be like hey this, this is my book the sounds room i'm the writer blah blah blah, blah. they'll be like oh cool and they try to walk away and i'm like that actually costs money and, and they go ugh and throw it back on the table. And then um, you just hear it like, in like every kind of amazing way. And I don't get mad about it anymore because my, my whole thing is um, I'm like, oh, well, it's not for them. Whatever. You know, and I don't get upset about it. But then there's guys who get really upset. And then there's there was one time in um, Washington, D.C., where um, this we we pitched the, the stories uh greg wright and i greg wright writes monstrous he writes uh holliston the book based off of adam green's tv show um he and i were sort of co-pitching things together like as bundle packages all this kind of stuff and this it was like a, a kind of a young girl she's probably like 16 or 17 and she was like oh it's really cool and then she goes to find her parents comes back and she looks like a beaten puppy at this point. She comes back like all oh, like you know, and her dad is leading with the forehead, you know, <laughs> making the way. And he just picks it up and he goes, "You people are trying to sell my daughter this devil shit!" And like is just like yelling and like, "Who da- these people think that they can?" And like was just like and then berating her. He's like, and to, to his daughter, she's like, "You think this is art? This is shit!" Like, not only did he wow. even make. I try to make us feel bad, but then tried to like shame his daughter for like things that she might have enjoyed. Stuff like that's when you kind of you you just want to be like, sir, you're an asshole. Uh, you yeah, know, Justin, why do you got to treat your daughter like that? I, you know, yeah, but but the the thing is, it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> but that conversation, like that, first of all, that's gonna we need to be selling books, right? So, like, that's going to take up a lot of time. Like, even if I wanted to devote the time to fighting with this guy, yeah. that's the time that I should be selling books, right? And if I'm going to call this guy an asshole, 
you then have to like follow it through and be like, you know, because you're you're not doing it to fight the guy. You're doing it because his poor daughter is fucked. Yeah. Um, and that's a whole process. That's like, you know, you're it's a thing. So those are you just let stuff like that go, and you're like, yep, yeah, yeah, oh, you're right, sir, devil piece of shit. Good, <laughs> good, good yep, you this nailed was, it. This was at a convention. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the that's... guy went into the convention knowing what it was. I, you know, I think, <laughs> like, that makes no sense to me. Yeah, I think a lot of people, like, especially, you know, the parents will come and they'll, break, they'll, they'll do it just for the kids, you know, and you can always tell because they're the ones who are, like, uh, on the phones and then just, like, they know when the kid's coming so they hold the money up without <laughs> looking up. Um, but for a lot of these people, too, I think that their, their only real, like, idea of what the convention is is Marvel movies, right? So that's kind of, like, oh, it's okay. just an entire full of Marvel movie stuff. Yeah. And, and it's, Totally realizing there's other publishers out there and other people like yeah, that. Yeah, so. it's, it's completely understandable. I mean, how you know, uh, if, if I went to a, a car convention, I'd be like, "Where's the car?" Mm-hmm. And it it would seem so remedial to anyone who's actually spends time and and, and enjoys it. Uh, it's then the way I consider it. It's then my job to like you know politely and, and easily educate and, and introduce you into the system. My favorite thing is when people tell me it's their first convention and my, I love that. I'm like, what do you think? What, what how, what it's crazy, right? You know, cause these are people who, uh, my, when I went to my first convention, I kind of had that, like, you know, just <laughs> finally feeling like I was around, um, because I, you know, I, I look a certain way. I look like the, like, like the, like a jock, like, and I do like, I, I like football. I did the, I'm a big dude. Right. But like, the truth is, is like, I grew up playing guitar and writing poetry and, and like all, all this kind of stuff. So I never, there was like a, a real disconnect. And when I went to my first convention, uh, and I saw all these people who all loved these things and no one was judging each other, the, the, the lack of judgment was a huge factor for me. The fact that people feel free. Um, and I really try to continue that on as I become um, a, an actual moving component of these conventions in my own little way. You know, especially like uh, um, like cosplayers and, and furries and like all this kind of stuff, which I, I never necessarily would have uh, I, 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 I wouldn't, I won't say I won't engage in it because it's like, you never say never you know what I mean? But like I have no real interest in it. Um, but for the people that do it and for the people that feel comfortable to be around lots of people doing it like there's something really special to be said about that um it's kind of why the it's kind of like uh we obviously we live in a culture where people are extremely quick to judge yes yeah. absolutely yeah. And, and as much as everyone complains about fanboy you know realistically those fanboys they're online they're not at the conventions at the conventions these are people who uh, made a decision to get up that morning, put clothes on, get in the car, deal with traffic, deal with parking, deal, deal with these people, buy the tickets, get in there. And th- so they made these concerted efforts to go out of their way to engage. And the- so right off the bat, you have people who are involving themselves yeah. as opposed to distancing themselves, which is what the the commenting online and all that kind of stuff is. So, you know, for anyone who's listening, and if you've ever worried about go go they're the best people are great there yeah i can agree i've always had a blast any one i've went to i mean new york comic con's getting crowded and more crowded every year but uh it's yeah. still a blast to go to we still have a ton of fun like it's just yeah it's, it's cool the people you run into the cosplayers you see I, maybe you'll artists yeah, the, uh, the everything artists, yeah. amazing still just seeing all the writers and artists everything it's just, it's a dope time, and I highly recommend everyone checking it out at one point in their life. But but like this, like we, we met Ben here at, at the Garden State Comic Fest. We had a one-on-one conversation um, with you guys. Like, that's what I love about it. I love going there. To... <laughs> it was it like, you're the most outgoing person, like, at that comic book convention. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, hey, here's my comic. Check it out. I'm Ben. And we're like, all right, this guy's fucking cool shit. <laughs> Yeah, if you couldn't tell from listening to any of this, whoever's still listening to me drone on, um, yeah, I'm a little outgoing. <laughs> hey, man, that's fine. That's a good thing. That's a good quality. Was, but yeah, I will say, uh, what's the there's the personality test, right? Like everyone's taking tests you now, um, and I'm not. I don't know what it is, but I'm the one where it's like I'm really outgoing, but I need to recharge big time. 
Like I, it is it is so not unheard of that after the conventions, I'll be in my room and just play like Injustice Two for hours. And give us your PS4 name so Justin can play you because I'm terrible at that game. <laughs> I, you know, I'm. I'm, I'm it's, it's not fun. No <laughs> yeah, none taken. <laughs> I'm okay. I think um, I I kind of got off the train. I started playing. Um, I got obsessed with playing Titanfall Two like over and over just because I love the mechanics so much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and then a couple other games like um, I <laughs> we really got into pinball like it's it's on the PlayStation but like I'm obsessed with it right now. Um, it, it's comforting. It, it's it's almost kind of mindless and uh, it, it's it's. I'm, I'm gonna agree, man. Pinball it, it, they, and they started like doing really good like virtual pinball setups, like emulator setups with like these you know 43 inch like t- uh, LED TVs. Um, or sometimes just you know big old touchscreen TVs, and they've just been having pinball on them, and they're freaking fantastic, dude. They're so yeah. good. It's so interesting. The re- it's very responsive, which I like, and um, uh, you know, but the, I so I haven't played Injustice. I was just playing before I talked mm-hmm. to you guys, and I was uh, because they had all the new characters. Where I just downloaded them all, so I was like kind of going through and seeing Enchantress is sick, mm-hmm. dude. It's, Enchantress is dope. Adam. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I can't play you awesome. know, just so damn funny. Who's, who's your lead? I'm I'm not a fan of Atrocitus. Of Atro- what? Yeah, really? Like Atrocitus. I hate that fucking cat. I hope that cat just gets eaten by Atrocitus. I don't enjoy it. Oh, I really like Atrocitus. <laughs> mm. Atrocitus. You know, um, mine's Red Hood. I can't stand Red Hood's gameplay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who do you think the cheapest character is? Cheap. The, the new, like, downloadable characters, really. Uh, I just got them all, so I'm going based off of the OG stuff, and I would have to say Aquaman. Aquaman? Okay. Yeah, cause, gonna... just because the reach. Yeah. With this... yeah his his strike, strike zone is so wide when he does any of his moves. I agree. I'm, you know? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Green Arrow. Yeah. I love playing with Green Arrow, but he's quick. He's got distance. <laughs> He is just a, he's a threat. And I, I can easily take people out so if I can get a little close and back him into a corner. Yeah, I like yeah, Green Arrow. Green Arrow. Um, but yeah, man, so that's the thing is like the the conventions, but I, I need my downtime. And like I, I, it, it, takes, it takes a lot to go to those conventions and be outgoing. Because like I said, the thing is, is when I'm there, you know, and you guys, uh, I hope you felt like welcome. And, and oh, I hope definitely. you guys felt. Yeah, and and, and I want everybody. You're like, I can't wait for him to ditch us for Teen Titans. <laughs> like I said, I, I, I would have I ditched us for Teen Titans, too. Um, <laughs> but that, that's the thing is, like, I want people to feel that way um, and then want to make them miserable with Seance Room. But then, um, you know, because it's a, I, I don't know, I guess maybe I'm putting too much on my shoulders. But so afterwards, I, I'm a total, uh, I'm out, I'm out like mm-hmm. a light, you know, so. You know, don't think don't think that it's like a superpower. It, it fucking drains, dude. So speaking of being draining and, and traveling and doing all this stuff, where can people find you next? Yeah, rad. Um, Boston Comic Con. Obviously, this is my home show. I, I live in uh, uh, just outside of Boston. So this is like the big one for me. Uh, my hometown throwdown type thing. Um, people come from all uh, this is it's getting bigger and bigger uh, every year. So that's really exciting. Then after that, I mean, honestly, near because you guys are out in Jersey, near you guys, uh, uh, the horror show in Atlantic City, Baltimore Comic Con, um, we are Heroes doing. Or yeah, that's another one. What, what? The Heroes and Villains in Edison, New Jersey. Uh, no, just like the the classic. Uh, no, we're not doing Heroes and Villains. Um, we don't do a lot with those guys yet. Um, n- not that we won't. We just for some reason we haven't. Um, Toronto Fan Expo, we're doing uh, Terrific Con in Connecticut, New York Comic Con, obviously. Um, e- there's a few more, but yeah, the, the the season's coming to a close. You know, starts up in about March and, and ends in about November, which is great because um, I would love to. S- I, I I've heard my fiance is a really nice lady. I would love to see her. <laughs> it's hibernation time for me. Uh, 
but other than that, um, we should probably start wrapping this up. And where can people find you at on Instagram or? Yeah, please find me on Instagram. I, I love it. I actually am, just recently found it in the last year, and I, I have a blast with it. Um, Mr. M R B E N A U, Mr. Ben A U. My last name is Goldsmith, and I thought the A U would be a clever nod to that. And it's only just been a pain in the ass because everyone, <laughs> Mr. Ben A U. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Ben A U. That's what I was. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, and then if you go, it's actually kind of fun. If you go to um, the Seance Room website, which is uh, www.seanceroomcomic.com or weissmanor.com, um, it's uh, an interactive website. So it's actually set up to. Yeah, it's awesome. I visited. <laughs> what did you do? Yeah. I don't even know about it's, that. Yeah, it's set up to be like a, um, a tourist destination for Weiss Manor. Um, and one of the rad things about it is um, the, we, Kayla, the artist, myself, and some friends and family all went to an actual seance in Salem, Massachusetts, and filmed it and edited it and put it up. So there is, it's up on the on that website, and it's uh, it's 15 minutes long. It is hilarious. Um, we did it. We we approached it from, we we were like, all right, either it's going to be horrifying, and I'm going to talk to like my uncle who's dead, mm-hmm. or uh, it's going to be hilarious. And she was, uh, let's put it this way. I walked in and up on her wall was her master's degree of psychology. So I'm like, are you, are you advertising? You're about to fuck us over. Like, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I would have gotten from it. Yeah. And, and so that, so it ended up being really funny and we, we put together, I spent a long time editing. One of the best parts about it, um, is that it was the day before I was going to propose to my fiance, um, who was then obviously my girlfriend at the time. So there's there's a whole bit in the middle there about that, which is which is wild. Like, uh, I, I mean, you got you got to see it. So I'll definitely link it in the show notes. Oh, absolutely. Thanks, thanks, guys. No problem. Uh, anything else you you want to let our listeners know? Or yeah, I mean, the biggest thing that, that anyone can do for to help. Uh, us is uh, Source Point Press or Mad Cave Studios. Just ask. They're both in Diamond. Ask your retailers. Ask the stores. Guys, there's not a lot of times where one person makes a big difference in the world of comics. Going to a retailer and asking to have them bring in the stuff from Source Point Press or from Mad Cave actually makes a huge difference. One person makes a huge difference if you do that. Did we see any of this stuff at uh, the Geekery? Um, I did not. I told him about it though, and I'm actually heading there tomorrow, so I'll bring uh, one of the issues with me and, and see if we can get awesome. them in there too. Thanks, man. Yeah, and you can let them know too, like um, the Rot, which is a book by David um, Hayes, which Sourcepoint puts out. We just filmed a movie uh, with Corin Nemec from Stargate, and Parker Lewis can't lose. He no is our main character. It's coming out in theaters, um, so they can, they, yeah, they can order that book in and get that in before the movie and everything. So. No. Before we go, you guys were, if I remember correctly, you guys were talking about doing like a shared universe with uh, Nora and Seance Room and what else was it? And the Rot, yeah, by, oh. the, by the same by that same writer who did um, <coughs> uh, Rot Tale. So he uh, apparently the two books he wrote with the word Rot right in the title. Uh, that's David Hayes, lazy asshole. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, we're doing a, a shared universe. So if you enjoyed any of what I talked about with the seance room, Nora, she's a coma fisher. She gets hired to go in and pull people out of comas. The Rot is a guy who learns to control his own cancer like a superpower. CDC wants him. Heaven and Hell both try to recruit him. Really sick book. Both books have that same um, uh, uh, painter style quality with very moody uh, colors. So that's we, we have the shared universe and all three of those stories together are going to combine. Uh, we begin production on that in probably in the summer of next year. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah. Look forward to it, man. Well, definitely thank you for coming just before the next. Uh, so, um, yeah. Um, yeah, man. I'll actually, I'll, and then once the cameras stop rolling, I'll, I'm going to pull up right now. Oh, old man glasses on. <laughs> so I can see it. Um, right. do this whole time. I got him oh, God. That's what you all look like? <laughs> yeah. Porn company. Hello? <laughs> now you're playing the librarian. Yeah. That's uh, your next scene in the porn company. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, I, as soon as the camera stops rolling, I'm going to show you guys some of the new art coming sure. out. Dope. All right. And Joe, you want to finish out and uh, 
explain all the shit. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I, I know. So you can find us at www.nerdcaster.com, um, on Facebook at Nerdcaster, on Instagram at Nerdcaster, on Twitter at Nerd underscore Caster, because we couldn't get Nerdcaster. And um, definitely pick up the seance room yes. wherever you can find it at any your local comic book shop. Um, definitely follow Ben on Instagram at Mr. Ben Au. <laughs> Mr. Ben AU. And that'll do it for this episode of Nerdcaster. Nerdcaster out. I never know how to stop this dumb thing. You're not going to edit this. this is just no, gonna it's going to be on there. The end of it, and we're just going to continue talking. That's until a, it, yep, really until I figure it out again, because yep. Danny's not here to, 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 to school me. Yep, just alt F4 it. Alt F4, nah, I, I, don't know how, I don't know what that does. Yeah, just shut the computer down. Yeah. <laughs> just fucking break it. This is going to be a really weird outro. <sighs> I'll edit it. <laughs> or, or I'll have... have uh, my my wife edited it, but she does that. If I just quit, does that work? I don't know if that's going to work because I need to save this. There we go. Yeah, okay. That worked. All right, cool. Are we off? Yeah, we're off. <laughs>